Paul Higby, former U.S. Navy SEAL, author of Enemies, Foreign and Domestic, A SEAL Story. And Carl, good morning to you and welcome back to America's morning, Newsroom. Bill. Was McMaster on point there? Go after ISIS? 100%. That remains your 100%. first priority? Go ahead. Yep, and and you're 100 percent right, and the uh, and so is McMaster. The the issue here is that we fought a battle of appeasement for the last eight years, where we said if we leave, if we give them what we want, if we negotiate, if we try to apologize, that they'll lay down their arms and stop bothering us. Now, that's obviously not the case. So we have two options here. If you want to defeat this enemy, you take their lives or you take their hearts. The appeasement battle didn't work, so it's time to start taking lives and hearts. And the way you do that is you inflict so much damage to the enemy that they're just unwilling to continue fighting. And McMaster, I think, understands that. And it's a very difficult battle because it's not just in Syria. It's global. It's, you know, North, northern Africa. We have uh, all through the Middle East. And it, it's spreading like, like, like cancer, essentially. And it's coming all over through lone wolf attacks and things like that. This is a difficult battle to fight. Yeah, and we have military action in half a dozen countries already. Nikki Haley on Sunday said, yep. you cannot achieve peace in Syria as long as Assad is still in power. Is she right? Does a civil war continue to rage in that country until you... Assad is gone. Well, you know what? Nikki Haley has a very difficult position to, to hold here. And the issue is if we remove Assad, we have to be willing to commit to possibly two, three, four decades of occupancy to re-stand up a government. We've toppled governments and dictators before. We may not like what he's doing over there, but we have to understand that if we break it, we buy it. And I know, don't necessarily know if we want to, as American people, want to commit the resources to going in there in long-term occupancy. We might, we might find what he's doing heinous because he's a murderous dictator, but at that said, it's his country. And it's not our problem. If we want to set no, up safe zones, I would encourage that. War but be, too. Got yeah. it. So as long as he does not use yep. chemical weapons, he stays. And the civil war continues. I, I would say... Yeah, I, I would say that we let him run his country as he sees fit up to a certain red line, as we demonstrated, we will not tolerate. No. Iran and Russia are running toward each other. Various reports on Sunday, the communication lines are open in a, um, in a brisk way, let's say, between Moscow and Tehran. This is what you find, Carl. Um, they're they're going to team up on one side, and now you're going to have Tillerson go and say whatever he says tomorrow with Sergei Lavrov and possibly Vladimir Putin face to face. What comes of that meeting, if anything? Well, I think that this is a point where, you, you know, you, you mentioned that they may be running together. I don't think so. I think that Russia, if they understand that we're will actually willing to commit the resources to fight this battle, they don't want to do it. Russia cannot sustain a war with us, nor, nor do we want a war with them. And if we allow them, if we tell them honestly straight up that we are not going to tolerate what Assad is doing after that red line, and that's all we're interested in is up to that red line, then I think we can come to agreement here. I don't think, I mean, Russia said that their support for Assad is not unconditional. So I think that there is a, a good factor there that we can get Russia back on our side with Tillerson's visit. Well, if Tillerson is prepared to say that Russia was complicit with what happened last week, that, that changes the, the relationship. If you have evidence oh, that, that the, the Russian Air Force was operating at that same air base, if you have evidence that suggests that the Russians knew that chemical weapons were being stored there, you, you have, you take this argument now to another level, Carl. You do, but here's the thing is we know that Russia is using Syria as a strategic airfield, strategic military operating bases. That's what they that's their interest there. So we know they're doing that. So maybe they are complicit. Maybe they are understand. Maybe they're just not willing to do anything about it. And I think that's something that uh, Tillerson needs to understand. And they need to understand also that if you store your planes and your resources at Syrian bases that are harboring chemical weapons, you run the risk of getting them destroyed. Well, Carl Higby, thank you. Something to watch. Appreciate your you input go. today. You bet. 21 before the hour now. We'll